yes, we have another road trip video coming up. Now this weekend I'm gonna test Kia Soul EV. It is actually pretty good for a previous generation car. You know, the new cars nowadays, we have the new updated BMW i3 with a bigger battery pack. You know, you have Nissan Leaf, the bigger one. You know, Renault Zoe has a big one. Uh, so all these are the new, but this one is still considered the old one. But it has a pretty big battery pack compared to the consumption. So that's what I'm gonna test now. This will be one of the last few cars of the, of the old generation that I will test. And it kind of stands out with very good, like, very good range compared to the other cars. Uh, I have to admit that it's not the prettiest car. It's like big and bulky, but I guess that's, uh, that's also a good thing. Especially now, this weekend, that I'm hauling some Nimber tasks. Yeah, I have like three sets of Nimber tasks here. Actually, some Nissan Leaf wheels and a big speaker and some banana boxes. Just two of them, yeah all fit in here I could fit even more stuff I could probably fit like five six more banana boxes yeah that's how crazy large it is and it is actually shorter than an e-golf so it's like you know very compact car but with uh, lots of space and the headroom is freaking amazing and it also has some okay uh, equipment it doesn't have adaptive cruise control but it has regular cruise control but it has ventilated seats and heated seats of course and it also has uh, heated seats for the rear and lots of other goodies. I will come back to that later. Um, the battery actually, I heard that it has 27 kilowatt hour available energy. So uh, we don't have to do the crazy stuff like we did last time with the Zoe. <laughs> we could probably drive like 100 kilometers at a time. We'll see. Um, but uh, I'm not sure where my first destination is. I'm assuming maybe Espa. Or maybe, um, yeah, maybe Ikea, Ikea, north of Hama. I've been there before uh, when I had the Ionic. And also, yeah, speaking of Ionic, you will recognize some of the stuff, the screen, and lots of stuff from hardware and software on this car because Kia and Hyundai, they are sister companies. So they actually use the same stuff, the same hardware. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry for that, I'm still dying. I'm trying to recover from uh, last week's trip. Uh, yeah. But anyway, destination unknown. Well, actually, no, I'm just kidding. We are going to Trondheim and back. And this time, we actually have to go to Trondheim because I have tasks to deliver and pick up in Trondheim. But anyway, I'm not sure where my first stop will be. We'll see. I will, you know, figure out how much energy this car uses, how much I left and stuff. But the first leg here is like a fast leg <coughs> with motorway speed. Yeah? <laughs> One of the few stretches we have motorways in Norway. And then I will try to drive as fast as, like, I will just go with the flow. And that also means kind of fast speed, yeah. We're talking about 110 kilometers per hour speed limits. That's like, what, 107 miles per hour? No, it's not 100, shit. Oh, now comes the first event. Around 60, I think around 65, 67 miles per hour. Yeah. All right, let's try and check it out how this car can handle it. We are at Fortnum's fast charger in Espa. So see here, well, okay, I arrived here with 5% and uh, let me show you the trip meter. All right, all right, all right. 
24 well, or 241 watt hour per kilometer is pretty crazy but I had very high average speed 103 kilometers per hour average speed yeah that's pretty fast and also if you look at the numbers there 85 kilometers uh, I did some calculation and uh, it turns out that I have about 24 kilowatt hour available energy now the car spec says that it's 27 but I only get 24 that could be because of um, uh, heat loss in the battery because I was driving kind of fast so um, uh, on the next, next leg uh, we have slower speed limits at least uh, not right now but soon uh, and that means uh, I could maybe expect 25 kilowatt hour but I shouldn't calculate based on 27 because then you know I might run out of juice all right so let's show you some uh, like the car while we're waiting here let me see how much we have now 16% uh, let's see, uh, just gonna uh, haven't gone to the restroom yet uh, let me see if the car estimates how long this will take charging what doesn't give me a time something uh, but it goes very fast yeah <laughs> DC power for the win but look at the interior Okay, it looks kind of weird, like, look, look at the speakers, why the heck is a speaker, this is the tweeter, it's like pointed upwards, uh, I, I would prefer to have it pointed against me, like, you know, more this way, but, uh, I guess it's just like a weird design, but the whole, like, uh, look and feel of the interior is, it's pretty good, this is like soft something, uh, pro probably um, fake leather, uh, but it's 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 soft okay over here we also have some kind of fake leather also soft this is hard plastic that one also shows you the charging progress um, then they have a touch screen similar to um, yeah very very similar to um, the Ionic and you can you know touch stuff here and then you have some buttons and and some settings you see here similar to Ionic you have the driver only that will only heat up the driver side now the fans kind of go wild because it has to heat up more <clears throat> you can also see the, the energy flow here you see we're using uh, 1.15 it's increasing now but if I press the driver only button it will drop it will only heat up my side of the car yeah which is pretty good I love it yes look here you have heated seats and you also have ventilated seats and they actually blow or suck I think they suck but they suck better than uh, Tesla <laughs> no better than uh, ventilated seats in the Model X um, now that that feature is discontinued so uh, hey, how do you switch off okay yeah very uh, very nice uh, the steering wheel is not that thick it's like you know uh, uh, no, no. They, if they could just make the steering wheel a little bit thicker, that would be like great. Yeah. Now this one doesn't have a adaptive cruise control. It has only manual cruise control. That works. Yeah. The the, the advantage, of course, is that uh, it will always work. It's not going to be blocked by anything like snow or schmutz or slush or whatever. Yeah. <coughs> and then you have some steering wheel options here. Uh, brr, brr, brr. What is this mode? What? what mode? Oh, steering wheel. Okay, comfort, normal, sport. Now I just want comfort, yeah. And also, oh, this is our, let me show you here. Look here, heated steering wheel. Yeah, awesome. And also they has this weird, uh, I'm gonna show you later. Oh, sorry, there, 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 there. There's a button here for uh, the speakers. This, they have LED in the speakers. Of course, you have uh, power uh, windows, uh, also power folding uh, side mirrors. And let me show you the back. Uh, let me see. Oh, what is this made of? It looks. Oh, yeah. It. Oh, I love the material. This one is soft. Yeah. It's more fake leather, but I love it because that means no harm or harm during the process. So, oh yeah, this one is also nice and soft. This one, okay, and then we have a nice pocket here for storing your uh, drinks or whatever. It says don't put drinks there, but at least bottles will work. Yeah, we have speakers, 
open the door and this one has an LED that could light up during the night. I gotta show, it's freaking awesome. Okay. <coughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry. <coughs> I'm still recovering from <coughs> oh, from the story trip. Oh. Just to show you how boxy this car is. It is so squared that can I operate this? Yeah. You see, it's so freaking square that even the glass here is is. <laughs> what the heck? All right. Okay. So the design is. I mean, you just have to love it or hate it. But I have to admit, it's very practical. This boxy side, like boxy shape, because it means. Uh, very good utilization of the of the space uh, in the car, and you use less space, like like you know, area, uh, ground space. But this one is smaller; it's shorter than the, an E Golf, but it feels roomier inside. So let me show you now. I have some nimble task. <laughs> yeah, I put like freaking a big uh, subwoofer in here. So that one is, uh, you see, I strapped them on uh, the hook that you, you use for the back seats. This back seat fall almost flat. It doesn't fall all, like completely flat because of the, the seat. Um, and then, oh, look there, look there. Oh, I'm gonna show you here. The rear seats are heated and they are controlled from the back. That makes perfect sense. Until someone switches them on and then they leave the car, yeah. Yeah, but then you have the same material here, you know, like soft, nice, soft interior. I love it. Okay, I, can, I can also use there. Yeah. And also the rear windows are tinted, probably by, from the fabric, from the fabric, from the, fa from the factory. Yeah, fabric in Norwegian means factory. So and that's factory tinted rear windows. And then back here, all right. Um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> My next car is a restoration. You can get this sticker from free from um, um, uh, was it again? Uh, Unplugged Performance. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you have to order something, but uh, you get them from Unplugged Performance. Pretty cool. Here you have the backup camera. It will gather some schmutz. Unfortunately, it's not covered like the, um, the E-Golf. And also, I noticed that the back here, the back window, gathers lots of schmutz. It has something to do with the the aerodynamics and you know the way that you get you get like I don't know salt and whatever hitting the back windows unlike um, uh, the Ionic for instance or Mol S you know it has like more like a sedan shape so then it doesn't get that same uh, schmutz in the back but let me show you here um, it has very nice and boxy shape which is awesome for hauling stuff and also the, the headroom is freaking amazing I have to show you once I get rid of some of these items this is um, uh, well third party rims but uh, wheels for a Nissan Leaf so we have four of those and then we have some banana boxes here and then the floor under the trunk can be open so I actually open it to get the maximum space um, so I can show you that later uh, everything is like packed and ready for the trip now but yeah this car <laughs> can haul a lot of stuff there yeah what else should I show you okay on that but um, the, the passenger side or at least the, the you know the, the space because this is such a compact car it's slightly more than like four meters long and you know it's kind of limited how much space you have um, this seat is pushed almost yeah yeah pretty much all the way to the back now yeah and you can see here the leg room isn't the greatest if at all so um, you know the front and the back passengers they have to kind of share the space if they want to have people here um, one thing I don't like, well, one, one nice thing is this, it has a pocket, um, but one thing I don't like, and also wifey tried to sit in here, is that there is no adjustment for height in the passenger seat. You can only recline and then adjust forward and backwards, that's it. You know, there's no like support here, there's no lumbar support and stuff like that, like you get in um, uh, a Volkswagen e-golf, for instance. 
But uh, I'll show you on the other side. This, 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 Driver's seat has more adjustment. Oh, by the way, the beeping is because I have my heater on while I'm charging, so it will try to warn me. But here, you see, you can adjust the seat. Oh, sorry, not that one. This one, here, this one. You can adjust the seat up and down, like that. And wow, <laughs> wow, it seems like the owner has blue jeans. So you, oh, holy crap, man. <clears throat> yeah, but then the seats, you know, perforated seats, leather seats. So it like it feels. Oh, you also have adjustable, uh, uh, yeah, adjustable uh, seat belts here, and you actually have handles to hold on to <laughs> that Tesla doesn't have. Uh, this one also comes with a panorama roof, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it will be more noise. It will be colder. This one is great. Yeah, just like it is. So um, um, I think you know. Overall, you get a pretty good car for the price. But now, you see, the problem with this one is that it's very well equipped. Uh, it's priced similar or equal to a Hyundai Ionic, And the Ionic is already out. So, I, like so far, uh, my conclusion after this <laughs> short trip is that if you want to buy um, an electric car in this, this like price range, um, because it is cheaper than uh, the BMW i3 and the Volkswagen e-Golf uh, a fully loaded is like you know much much cheaper uh, but the problem is the range and also the, the aerodynamics doesn't make this car the most efficient one so if you want to buy a new car you probably want to look at the uh, Ionic same price more way more equipment way better efficiency uh, also more modern design uh, but <coughs> oh, sorry for that oh shit but of course if you're looking for a second hand most likely the second hand oh shit the hand <coughs> the second hand uh, are not available yet for Ionic so that's when you want to buy one of these a second hand if you can't afford a brand new Ionic all right, let's see. <clears throat> let's look at the stats here. So I've been charging for 15 minutes, averaging about 43, 44, maybe 45 kilowatt. That's pretty fast. All right, all right. I'm gonna go to the restroom now. Oh ho ho ha ha! If you come to Espa, you have to get the freaking buns. Oh, I only bought three. I might buy some more on the way back. Yeah, for wifey. But uh, yeah, I just had to get some. Anyway, we've been here for just half an hour and we gain a lot of energy. So we are at 89%. Now this car, the old model, will stop charging, well, fast charging at 83%. And then I just had to disconnect and then start charging again. It's, I don't know what the heck is up with that, but um, um, I want to see how far it can go. Uh, yeah, well, I heard that the new, uh, Kia Soul will charge to 90, was it 94 percent, which is actually the same as the Hyundai Ionic. So uh, yeah, that's great. Um, I will, I don't know, the charging gets kind of slow past 80 percent. So um, yeah, but then again, I kind of want to push it to 100 percent or at least 99 percent to see how far we can get. But then again, you know, the, this place is probably not the best place to test that because we still have some high speed, well, high-ish speed motorways here and then from uh, there in the joint there we will have like, uh, well, okay, the speed limit here is 100, 110 and then it'll be 80 and then some 70 and then, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. yeah, this one is kind of hard to, whoa, 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 how the heck do we, okay, um, I think I asked him, okay, yeah, there, you see you get some kind of, whoa, what the heck, this is like freaking weird shit, man, Whoa! Okay, okay. I wonder if I can reach a year, which is about. Uh, I don't, let, let's see. Uh, let's try the navigation here. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time fiddling around with the navigation, but um, let's see. A uh, year. Uh, uh, okay. Let's just do that. 
Okay, we don't wanna whatever. Yeah, actually pretty close to the charging station is right over there, alright? Set as destination, we can add waypoints just like uh in the Ionic. It's pretty great. Okay, calculating. Whoa! 104 kilometers. I don't know, I don't want us to drive slow on the motorway. I wanna drive fast, so um we will probably not reach a year. We will stop in Lillehammer then, okay? Uh, let me see, how do we go back now? She, how do you, I want I wanna, navigation. Okay, address, yeah, okay, okay. Let's say Lillehammer instead. <coughs> it should auto-complete then, okay. Lillehammer, okay. Set as destination. All right. Yeah, 90 kilometers, that's fine, that's more likely. Yeah, start guidance. Okay, all right, all right, so how are we looking now? If we go to the EV button, energy, okay, 91%. Whoa, it actually estimates 110 kilometers of range, but I, because of some more away driving, I actually use a general rule of thumb in this car that 1% is one kilometer, so yeah. We're gonna see now how it goes. And from here, pretty much, until uh, we reach Trondheim and back, there will be almost no more way. But um, the consumption, well, it was <laughs> really high, you know. Two, like, was over 250 watt hour per kilometer, but we also did some elevation. And also this speedometer, I measured to be like 5% uh, off, so we are actually driving at 85 kilometers per hour right now. But the consumption will drop now because we're gonna go downhill and also the speed drops a lot compared to the highway, in motorway I mean. And also I see that the consumption is um, it's very low, yeah. See here, climate, uh, this one has a heat pump and it also has active cooling of the battery and battery heater and it will also, just like a Tesla, use the leftover heat from motor and battery to heat up the cabin so it's very smart like uh, uh, energy management and I believe like, most modern EVs should follow this uh, like this design all right um, what else should I say about the car you know it actually is quite uh, well uh, like soundproofed you know, when we're doing highway like this, one is on this fitted with studless, studless tires, but uh, it's very quiet in here, nice and quiet. So not on the same level as uh, the e-golf, that one is like dead silent. Uh, but pretty good and uh, actually <laughs> better than Model X because Model X has so much window surface and it's not the best sound for car, unfortunately. All right, I'm just gonna enjoy the drive now, enjoy the view, and uh, maybe listen to the music. Kiwi Oyer. And look here, 
205 watt hour per kilometer consumption but look at the trip I did 106 kilometers spending less than 90% charge so that means in a 100% charge I could go 120 kilometers in winter <laughs> now this is like the the real like the the winter range I would call it you know see outside yeah it is winter outside so winter range is more like real world range whereas um, like the the NEDC the was was it calling it and the EPA was well, N N E D C is freaking bad because it gives you like this high number that is very unrealistic uh, EPA is slightly better that's what they use in America uh, gets slightly better numbers but still you know it's far from the truth so the way I'm doing now you know just doing a regular road trip carrying some shit behind there uh, that will give you a more realistic numbers than what you can expect if you get one of these cars and uh, you know so the consumption there is of course not the, the lowest so around 200 watt hour per kilometer other cars can also match it but this car has a bigger battery pack than the, many of the other ones so you know e-golf um, and the Nissan Leaf, the old one at least, they have a uh, 24 kilowatt hour battery pack. <clears throat> the old um, BMW i3 has only 22 kilowatt hour. But um, <clears throat> if you start looking at uh, the, the energy available, you know, that is less than the total energy. And it always has to be. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry for that. It always has to be slightly lower. But, you know. You also have to look at how much energy is available for driving because you know the need for energy for heating up or cooling the car if you live in a warm country uh, is the same you know uh, for this car or a car with a bigger battery and that means that let's say this one has uh, 37 kilowatt hour uh, on, a, on a leg you might need 2 kilowatt hour for heating or cooling and then you are left with 25 kilowatt hour whereas if you have an, an e-golf with a 22 kilowatt hour available <coughs> you have to spend 2 kilowatt hour and then you end up with two, a 20 kilowatt hour left and that means that this one has 25% more available energy for, for the actual driving, the propulsion so you know if an e-golf can do 100 kilometers this can do 125 you know it's very really simple math so uh, even though the battery size doesn't you know doesn't sound that much but size matter as as a nation I have to say yeah, size matter yeah um, you know what I think I'm gonna fly my drone here yeah and um, and then we are we actually good to go but yeah I'm gonna fly my drone and then uh, we'll see we are getting close to 83% where the fast charging will stop and the next stop will actually be uh, Ringebu. Uh, it's only 40 kilometers from here, but you see, Ringebu has a circle K, and I have this cup. Yeah, I don't know if you know the deal. Uh, if you have this cup, then you can uh, refuel as much as you like on circle K. You have coffee and tea and whatever, but I just want the hot chocolate. Oh yeah, because I want to have that with the buns. Uh, so I might as well charge up over there while I stop for uh, some nice juice. Uh, let me see, so 81% now, okay, uh, we are gonna go up. I wonder how long we've been here, because, uh, you know, fast charging is, it's actually fast, it's very fast. Oh, no mind the beeping, the beeping is because I, I didn't stop the car. Okay, so we've been half an hour, <laughs> yeah, gaining 21 kilom kil kilowatt hours. Oh man, I mean, I love DC fast charging. Um, uh, okay, well, there are some cars that doesn't have it. For instance, the Renault Zoe, also the Mercedes-Benz uh, B-Class doesn't have it, and um, Ford Focus. But you know, if you only drive around the city, then you can say that you don't need fast charging. But the car becomes so much more flexible if you have fast, char fast charging option. Like now, you know, it kind of looks like a city car, but people they actually l drive long trips with this car, so yeah nice but you know what until now we have done like mostly boring um, roads well we still will have some not so interesting roads but uh, I want to try some driving dynamics with this car also so hopefully I'm gonna hit that maybe later tonight and uh, I'm gonna give you guys some feedback on that too
Oh yes, we are already in Ringebu and uh, the car is using up. Uh, I calculated that the next uh, fast charger I will stop at is in... Oh, there's a leaf coming. Ooh, cool. <laughs> the next one is... Um, you want, um, let me... I had some problems with the other chargers. I'm gonna wait for... See if they can start it, otherwise I gotta help them. Alright, uh, turns out that there is a problem with... Uh, I don't know, it seems like the communication on this charger. Uh, but the other one is working, so that's great that we have multiple chargers here. So I help uh, the, the Leaf owner. Uh, actually, I unplug my own car and I let the Leaf use a channel mode plug because they have uh, kind of low juice. And then I'm using this one. It's 22 kilowatt AC, but I can utilize 7.4 as I mentioned before. But uh, my state of charge is like 70% or something, 75. And I need to go to Circle K anyway, so yeah. This is like, you know, sharing is caring. <laughs> yeah, that one and that one. Oh, oh. All right, all right, all right. You know what? I need to pee and I have to get... Well, I have everything now. Yeah, yeah, I have everything now. Okay, so... Um, we are now in Elimbu. It's one of the small towns you have to drive to to get to Trondheim. This is also one of the reasons why I don't like driving Gibraltar. <clears throat> when I go to Trondheim, but I guess for a test like this, yeah, it's nice. Uh, you get a little bit of variation and uh, also get to test like elevation and low temperature and stuff like that. So anyway, it is still winter here. Uh, we are in the end of January, so um, still frozen most of the place around Norway, especially this area minus five degrees celsius or four i don't know but uh, last week it was freaking cold much much colder than now but still yeah and you see the circle k sign oh yeah <laughs> i'm gonna get some uh, hot chocolate that i will enjoy with uh, esper buns oh yeah Yeah, all right. I'm charging slightly slower than I would. I'll probably get like six kilowatt now. But again, I'm at somewhat high state of charge anyway, uh, 80%. Usually at 80%, I would get like 20, like 30 kilowatt maybe. But all right, um, doesn't matter. Oh, look here. You have to appreciate the good things in life. Well, it's just a cup from uh, Circle K, but mm, hot chocolate and freaking buns from Espa is like these buns are known all over the world now yeah maybe because of me or maybe because of other people yeah oh mm. this is caramel buns with circle K uh, hot chocolate mm. Mm -hmm. I could stay here for a while now just to enjoy this good stuff oh yeah in Dumbos charging this is uh, Arctic Roads chargers 
And then over here we have the superchargers. Uh, no one is here. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think I'm gonna go to Kiwi and grab some food and maybe go to. Uh, oh, they also have Circle K here. Yeah, I wanna I wanna fill my cup. Oh, there's Circle K over there. Some. Oh shit! Freaking slippery, man. Look. I can like slide. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. It's so freaking slippery, but you know what? I have stud tires. That's what I said. I have studless tires on the Kia, and it works great. Look in Hakobelita R2. First, when I saw the slow, I was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna get hyper." But then, you know, it managed to grab, grab the, the surface. Yeah, you know, I can't grab the surface, so that's pretty nice. Um, this is, oh, you see, <laughs> I think there has been uh, a car with stud tires here, look. Yeah, I think there was a Tesla was there right before I started recording. Uh, but we have actually charged a lot already. I flew my drone. Um, let me see, we've been charging for almost 20 minutes. Gain 20 kilowatt hours. Whoa, what the heck? Uh, no, 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 uh, most of the chargers I've been visiting today uh, from Fortum they used the ABB charger and this is the Delta charger. Yeah, 50 kilowatt, but uh, they also, there's also a 100 kilowatt variant. Uh, but that's Vespi, the other direction, south of Oslo, 80 kilometers, like, about 50 kilometers south of Oslo. But you know what? 74 percent. Ooh, I better hurry because I have to. Well, you know what? Maybe I should sit and wait. Yeah, this is a, l a little bit cumbersome because. The charging will stop at 83% and then I have to restart charging again and then it will stop at 93 wait, wait, was it 94, 93? It, it seems to be like inconsistent, sometimes it's 93, sometimes 94 but um, it's a little bit of a hassle because then I have to kind of sit and wait here uh, to restart the charger uh, because uh, my next uh, destination is Bajko which is over 100 kilometers, you know, like 115 kilometers from here, and uh, I need to kind of use up enough so I can get there. And that means like 94% charge. I think 94 should be fine because there is some elevation drop from here to bike cork a little bit, not too much. Hmm, yeah, but uh, too lazy. I mean, I could there are some other charges on the way, but I'm too lazy to stop on every freaking charge on the way there. Yeah, so I'm gonna figure out what to do uh, in this ice land. We have been here way too long, probably like one hour or something. But I wanted to charge to 100% to see how fast it went. And it was somewhat fast. There seems to be a small buffer in the top, I'm not sure. And this kind of information is really hard to find out about EVs. Mostly, you know, they show you the nice numbers, some horsepower or whatever. But, you know, this, this information you have to really dig or maybe try to measure it yourself. But uh, it seems like the car is close to 100% or is it 100%? It's still blinking there, but uh, close enough. And um, I'm going to drive, for the first time now, I'm going to drive somewhat careful. Yeah, most of the time I went with the flow, slightly over the flow, but uh, yeah. uh, this time I will try to drive carefully and uh, slowly discharge the battery to see if I can get 27 kilowatt hour out of it. Because, you know, um, yeah, this is like battery uh, stuff theory that um, if you drive very fast, you discharge a battery fast, you get more heat generated in the battery and that means you get less actual energy for propulsion out of it. 
so um, I have to have drive carefully um, and see 27 is according to the spec at least if I can get 26 you know that's pretty close to the spec yeah but I'm not gonna drive all with zero I know I can get to uh, bicycle no problem and then we will see how much we have left and we can extrapolate you know, how much energy we could get out of the battery yeah so uh, I think we are good to go now up in the mountains of Dovrefjell. It is pitch dark out here. So um, now I just discovered a nice feature with this car. Uh, you see the screen here? There's a button next to it with a moon on it. And then when I press it, boom! The screen goes blank! <laughs> nice! Now I only have the instrument cluster lit up. And that one obviously can't be switched off. But it's like Wow, this is so nice for driving in the evening. And uh, let me see. Oh, I should show something else. If I play some music here. Look, look. The speakers, they, they, they actually, they illuminate at night and they dance with the music. <laughs> that is so cool. Okay, I have to switch it off now. Yeah. Wow, that is so awesome. Yeah, we are now descending the mountains and uh, the road is a little bit more interesting we have a little bit more turns so the impression I get from uh, Kia Soul is that uh, it is like a, a more comfortable car I mean the ride is pretty soft you know it's not like you don't feel every bump but that also means that the car is not that uh, sharp in the turn so let me see I'm try to yeah you kind of it kind of wags a little bit, not like a boat, but it kind of wags slightly more than some of the other cars. Um, but, you know, it's not a sporty car, and also the seats kind of reflect that too. That They are nice and comfortable, you know, it will fit my big fat butt, but they don't, I mean, they have good side support. Yeah, they have some cushions in the side here, um, but they are not like, you know, they're not like the M sport uh, seats or or you know the, the next generation seats in model s so um if you're looking for like a sporty car i think this is not the car for you but still it's uh, really good and um you know this car every time you start it like after you charge or whatever it will default to eco mode so uh, it's a little bit annoying i mean why couldn't you just remember it and then you have to disable eco mode there's like a button here but you switch it off and uh, it will change the throttle response. Uh, it will be like more responsive in the not eco mode. But there is just two modes: eco and standard, or whatever you know, off. Um, unlike the the Ionic, it also has normal eco, and then it has that sport mode, which just makes the throttle even more even sharper. Yeah, but this one, uh, just like most EVs, the throttle is, you know. It's kind of soft. You don't get like the instant re response, uh, unlike Tesla. But uh, it's very good. And uh, as you can hear, also the soundproofing uh, is uh, quite good. I, I like it. Uh, it's not like I said earlier. You know, it's it's not on the same level as uh, e-Golf, but it's sufficient. And also, wind wind noise is good. And we are we have studless tires, so that's one of the reasons why we. Uh, we have less uh, road like road noise and also you know you have to know that the the tarmac in Norway is pretty bad well you know it's not pretty bad but it's not the best it's not as smooth as a tarmac in in uh, France or Denmark they have the, like the smoothest tarmac but uh, still um, it's the, like the road noise and the wind noise doesn't bother me yeah, so let's see now, how are we looking? We are 55 kilometers to destination in Balkok. So, uh, so far, I have to say that this car is so comfortable to drive, like on long trips, 
like um, it is it's a very good choice um, I'm not gonna conclude anything yet because we are not even halfway we have to go to Trondheim and then back again but so far the impressions are really good at the fast charger in stern now wow look here okay uh, well it was 14.5 uh, until I stopped and then I idle and then it actually counts when I'm idling so average was 145 and then I drove 150 kilometers <laughs> so now I did some calculations and I have about 25.5 kilowatt hour available uh, it's not 27, but um, close enough, okay? So it's very important for me to know that number. So next time, I, I guess I can estimate 25 kilowatt hour on a full charge. Yeah, I came here with 20% left. <laughs> so, you know, if I would bother to charge to 100%, I would probably go, I could go 100, like 150 kilometers if I wanted to, but uh, about 100 kilometers is good. Yeah, so anyway, um, I'm gonna unload some uh, wheels here. I know what the receiver is. Someone you have seen before. Uh, his name is Isak Swan, and uh, he was uh, one of the participants in the um, uh, Björning 2015. Yeah, yeah. You know when we moved from uh, Oslo to uh, Boulder. Yeah, during that crazy trip to Boulder. So um, he lives over here, and I, uh, he's going to come here and meet me. Uh, it's a big advantage for me, of course, that he, I don't have to go to his place because it's like a, a detour, and then he lives like up in the, in the hill, like 80 meters elevation. But uh, yeah, and I need to charge here anyway, so this is like great for me. I'm going to start unloading the cargo and prepare. Oh yeah, so um, here are the wheels. Uh, for Nissan Leaf, uh, and this is the oh, this is a classic 85. Yeah, <laughs> so you probably recognize him. Uh, let me see, get some light here. Isaac Swan, yeah, you went to Buda with me. <laughs> oh, it's pretty crazy trip. No, we should we should do another trip in 2017. Summertime. Summertime, go somewhere fun. Yeah. Far. Yeah, far. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, so that was actually a Nimber trip, a Nimber task. Yes, you're gonna get a um, well, uh, Nissan Leaf. Yeah, as uh, a second electric car. Uh, so we'll go completely fossil free. And you replace on a fossil? Uh, yes, I'll replace an old Volvo. Uh, oh, yeah, awesome. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right, uh, anyway, I will uh, have to pack. Uh, so this car is kind of empty now. It's, yeah, I see. <laughs> it has lots of space, so I will have to rearrange the luggage, and then um, yeah, I have to wait for the charge. Also, 56 percent now. Oh, yeah. It's going fast. I'm finally in Trondheim. Um, yeah, I'm gonna deliver the two boxes. I think this is the address. So here they are. This is some banana boxes with uh, porcelain. Yeah, and then we have the speaker. And then I'm gonna go to my uh, uh, cousin. Oh, yeah. Ah, 
finally. Yes, this is my cousin Trina. Yeah. Hello. My brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Trina is going to be my assistant. I will finally. Uh, the back seats are available, so um, I'm going to show you now how it looks like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me hold a little so. So, yeah. so you see, um, if uh, I'm 173, all right. So if I sit here, actually, <coughs> pretty okay leg room, but I feel like, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm not that I'm not that tall, but but uh, you know, it's like it feels like a Tesla Model S actually. Where you know, see my my legs are like this, uh, so it's not comfortable for long trips. Uh, but uh, okay, gonna film. But the headroom. Oh, you see here, you have adjustable headrest, and the headroom here is just freaking amazing. What? Look here, I can like have. Yeah, it's like lots. Uh, so it can accommodate for tall people, but the leg is not the great. And you see, if you see here, <coughs> I. I push the, the seat kind of far in the front, but uh, this is how it looks like if you have it in the back. So, okay, I come over there. So, it's not the best, of course, because this car is not that big. Yeah, I'm gonna show you here. So, this seat has been pushed. Yeah, I think I showed it earlier. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting old, but I'm just gonna show you how it looks like uh, when there, there's no stuff in here. And then the boot, I um, mean the trunk, depending on if you are British or American. The trunk is freaking huge. I mean, for the size of this, oh yeah, is this don't mind this uh, my crap here, but uh, I'm gonna show you. Like I have stuff here, and this is like my my uh, my stuff for transporting. But it has like a deep deep pocket, so it is bigger. Oh. <laughs> No doubt it is bigger than uh, the trunk in the Zoe. So yeah. Mm. Alright. Uh, anyway. I think that's it for now. I'm gonna chill, relax, get some sleep now. And then tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I will put two big chairs in here. <laughs> and then go back to Oslo. It is Sunday. Almost 10 in the morning, and I'm heading back south to Oslo. So um, last night I emptied the car, and uh, this morning I put in uh, two large chairs. So I'm going to show you that later. Uh, they actually fit quite well in here. I was <laughs> very worried that they, you know, they wouldn't fit, but they actually do because you know the seats fall almost flat, not entirely flat, but very flat. But you still have the footwell available, so that's good because some cars, you know, you have to like for all this stuff and then the football doesn't yeah and then some cars also requires you to detach the headrest but this one just falls down just like that and also because of the very boxy shape then you know you get uh, quite good uh, space back there i have to overtake a slow driver because it's sunday yeah and this car is <laughs> i mean it's it's actually quite powerful i mean not i mean like not super powerful but you know the, the EVs in this class, they they are powerful enough to do like overtakes, and I, I overtook some uh, some big rigs yesterday. You know, it works just fine because you have lots of torque. And electric motors they have like you know 250 newton meter of torque or more, and about 100 or more horsepower. That is plenty for normal driving. Of course, if you want to go to Nordschleife, then you probably need more. If you want to drive 250 kilometers per hour in uh, Germany, then of course you need more. But for most people in city driving and also some highway driving, and the power is plenty. But anyway, um, next stop is probably Bergkog. Uh, I will not uh, do the full charge again. It takes too long. Yeah, I just want to get home. So uh, this time I will only charge to probably 80% and just keep going and there will be more charging stops but that's just how it is.
are in Bajkok. I just flew my drone and uh, I think now I had to go to the restroom and everything. Uh, but I'm just gonna show you here. Oh, there's a... Oh yeah, that, that's the leaf, by the way, I uh, overtook. He actually, he been, he's been following me on the, my YouTube channel. Um, but anyway, 59% already. Uh, I think we have, let me see, do I get an estimation of how long it will take? Um, charge it. Oh, it doesn't say, that's kind of weird, but I think like 15, 20 more minutes. Uh, and then I'm not sure where to go next because, um, okay, map. Um, I plotted Alvdal, because we have Kvikne like halfway there, but the problem is that the, the, everything is closed in Kvikne, so there's no restroom, no food, or whatever. Uh, so the next one is Alvdal. Uh, let's zoom out here. There, so Alvdal is over there, 170 kilometers. That means I have to do a 94% charge. Yeah, 84 is probably not enough, so okay, I can do 94. Uh, it takes slightly longer, but just for convenience, I'll do it. Now in Alvdal, and it is time for some cup noodles. Oh yeah! So this car actually has two 12 volt outlet, and they are also marked with how much, uh, how big the fuse is. This is 120 watt. This is 180 watt. So that means this one is 10 amp, and this one is uh, 15 amp. Yeah, it's not awesome. And then you have auxiliary input and USB. So it's pretty nice. I think I'll use this one just to be sure I will blow a fuse. So the trick is that uh, you have to bring hot water and then, you know, it's not boiling, but you kind of want it boiling. So this one will, I mean, it, it boils very slow. That's the problem. So if you use like cold water, it will take freaking forever, like half an hour to boil. But because it's already kind of hot, it takes like, I don't know, five minutes to boil. Yeah, because this one is way, way slower than uh, like a one, the 230 volt uh, version. But uh, anyway, so you see now, usually I have this, this is the car charger for the drone, and then uh, that one is for uh, for this inverter, uh, you get 230 volts, I charge uh, the camera, and then it also has another USB in case I need it, but this one is a cup holder, see, it's a, oh shit. so it's a regular cup holder, sorry for all that uh, junk I have in the car. So we have two cup holders here, and of course <laughs> they fit uh, the noodle cup quite well. And then here you have more space, actually lots of space. This is freaking deep. Yeah, you can put I don't know, more bottles in here or whatever crap you have. Yeah, that's pretty nice. There's like little pockets where you can put stuff here and here. And also you have... Uh, let, me, let me show you on this side. So same, same for each side. See, I show you that one, and you also have a small pocket here for keys or RFID or whatever. So wow, <laughs> we came here with ten percent. We already have thirty-six percent, and uh, the water is mm, almost ready. So I guess by the time we are finished, we can go to the next destination, which is in uh, I think Stur Alvdal, Koppang. Yeah, 77 kilometers from here, that's gonna be a piece of cake. Here is the mandatory cargo inspection. So in here I have two chairs. They have been well wrapped. Uh, they're actually, they're kind of big. Um, and I was, I was worried for many days that it wouldn't fit in this tiny car. But you know what? 
they fit just fine and I could even put some banana boxes here as you see probably fit like two or three um, and also in the back I didn't utilize that space under the trunk which will also give me space for let's say another two more um, banana boxes oh oh what I just just noticed there's also a 12 volt outlet in here wow nice and also there's like a small small pocket here for something I don't know but of course um, this car lacks the the hooks for securing cargo so that's why I use these hooks now there see some of the chairs yeah two of them so um, oh but it's freaking it's freaking cold outside it's like minus five degrees Celsius it's not as cold as last weekend so you know uh, the test this car you know it's not it's never gonna be like an equal test every time I do this trip so the trip is more or less equal but uh, the weather will always change so in order to do like the same uh, equal test you have to go with many cars at the same time and then I need more drivers and you know I work alone yeah uh, but you see <laughs> The reservation holder. I mean, the owner is also a reservation holder. <laughs> yeah, my next car is a reservation, and you know, most people don't understand unless you have a reservation or you have like a Tesla uh, owner, and you know what that means. But I feel like I haven't been here that long. Let me see. Oh, DC for the win. Let me see. Touch the screen. Okay. Charlie, can I see the status? Yeah, I can. Okay. So see, I've been at 18 minutes. We went from 10 to 50, 60%. So we gained 50% already. And um, well, okay. So the charging station estimates that uh, the last one will take 24 minutes to what seems like 80, 90%, 80%. I'm not sure. I think that's actually 90%. Hmm. Oh well. fast charger in Evenstad uh, so actually my first plan was to uh, stop at uh, Shell uh, a little bit up there like 25 kilometers before I came here um, but I figured that you know I have enough juice so I might as well stop here yeah because then I can like cut down the numbers of charging stops but the problem over here is that this is like a it's like a college campus or something so there there's really nothing here just just the chargers two of them and and that's pretty much it like you know i would like like gas day i mean sorry i mean i would like um a restroom and food and something just like gas stations you know they have stuff like that so uh, it's kind of weird place to put a fast charger <laughs> i have to say like like you wouldn't put a gas station over here right uh, I mean, just just the gas pump, not everything else that f 
follows the gas station, just the pump is like very inconvenient to stop here, and especially for electric cars, because we kind of have to stop here and wait, where, whereas, okay, if there was like a, a, ga a gas pump, you could just fill up and then go. So, so I have to like plan ahead, like, not because the car, I mean, the car can get the juice it wants, but I have also have needs, you know, I have to go to the restroom and uh, maybe grab something to eat. So it's very inconvenient, but then again, it's also nice that the charger is here in case I run out of juice. Yeah, um, so I'm not sure where to go now. Uh, I look at the map and we have, we have the next charger is like, uh, let me see, let me look, look back here. I don't remember exactly. Uh, uh, nice and warm in here. You see, we are close to 80%. I've been here for maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, so if you look at the map here, zoom out a bit. Wait, what the heck? Why is it so weird? Oh, I, I think it's because it's, it's in navigation mode. I could stop. Uh oh! Okay, okay. Let how, how do I do this? Okay, okay. So, all right, all right, all right. There, there. So I could drive like 20 more minutes to Rena, over there, or I can go to Elverum, but Espa is a little bit too far. It's like, uh, let me see, I think it was like over 100 kilometers, 122. That's gonna be kind of hard. I mean, I could do it, but then I had to charge to 90 ish percent and I had to drive slow. So you know what? Let's visit one of the Kiwis in Elverum. It's over here. Yeah, you can see it. And there are several spots over there, but you have to take a small detour. But let's try that. Uh, uh, it's kind of boring for you guys to see the same uh, charges over and over again. Yet another Kiwi, this time in Elvidum. Um I had to juice up there for maybe 20, 25 more minutes. Uh, because my next stop will be Nebenes. Yes, and now this is uh, Elvidum, uh, downtown Elvidum. You know, usually when I go to the supercharger in Elvidum, it's a little bit outside of the city. Now we are in the city and I kind of want to go to the restroom and I don't want to wait for uh, for Nebenes, um, but I'm not sure what it is to do here because uh, <clears throat> on Sunday everything is almost yeah everything is closed. Well, not everything, like restaurant, but uh, I don't want to eat here yet. So uh, maybe I'll try to find find something, something like this is like oh, yeah, let me see, over here. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah, gonna go on a little trip. I mean, a little tour. Around Elverum. <coughs> I think I have never been here before. Like walking around. There's, there's a Tesla. Oh, focus. There's a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, that's like EVs all over the place. <coughs> so let's see, what do we have over here? It's like a. It's like a. Shopping street or something, but I don't think there are any. But there's Amphi over there. Okay, let me see. But I think Amphi, well, Amphi is like a chain of um, or um, let me see, shopping malls. But I think they are closed on Sundays. So, um, what to do?
in Nebenes, and as you can see, 75% uh, of the fast chargers are occupied on Fortum. But over here, at the superchargers... <laughs> okay, let me see, how many cars do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve... 16 cars, I've counted 16 cars. That means 16 out of 20 stalls are occupied. <laughs> yeah, so this is like peak hour. This is really peak hour. Usually, there's like less than half of these are occupied. So, can you see Tesla? It was a good call to make a lot of stalls here. It's being used. And this is even before Mall 3 comes out. There's another Mall X coming. We have to have one. Three more X? Yeah. Alright, so I'm um, just gonna do a little um, pit stop over there in the cafeteria and then, um, uh, yeah. We are finally back home. So this has been an interesting trip. Uh, I have to say, this car is pretty awesome. You know, I completed a 1,000 kilometer long trip in the weekend and it's just a piece of cake. Yeah, because of fast charging and well, good coverage also. So what should I say about the uh, Kia Soul? It is actually a very spacious car for such a small size. You know, my cousin, uh, they have a Golf and she said that uh, this car feels bigger than the Golf, even though the Golf is slightly longer, you know? So, they have done something with the interior to make it, you know, really roomy and have really good headroom. And also all the equipment, uh, well equipped for this class, but if you consider buying one, you know, um, you should also consider Ionic because if you buy a new one, then I say go for Ionic. It is much, much better equipped and also more range, uh, more newer tech, um, same price, but of course if you need good headroom in the back, then yeah, this is the car to go for. Uh, but as for Ionic, it is better in pretty much all points. <clears throat> uh, but if you're going for a second hand, then the, there aren't many Ionics out there in second hand, so you know, there's kind of high demand for it, <clears throat> for a good reason. So then, yeah, you might get one of these instead. But uh, keep in mind that uh, the Kia Soul and Ionic does not have app support. So you cannot just open uh, you know, your phone and then preheat the car or check status on how it is charging and stuff like that. So <coughs> it is, for some people, a big disadvantage. For me, it is a big disadvantage because I'm so used to app in Tesla. Uh, but it has the, the scheduled charging in the car and also scheduled preheating. So, you know, if you can live with that, yes, then Ionic or Soul is really a good choice. But if you need, like, um, app support, and also if you need adaptive cruise control, then this is not the car. Then you have to go for, uh, you know, I don't know, e-golf or something else. Yeah, so, um, all right, you know, this is probably one of the last videos I'll make about these uh, small cars. I'm kind of, I want to go back to driving uh, Tesla. Alright, um, that's it for now then. 